Welcome to the Set Me Free Radio podcast. I'm Stephanie Olson, and I'm here with Cindy Holting. And we have missed you. It has been an entire summer since we have done a podcast because our kids were home and our houses were loud. My house was loud. Was yours? Uh, yeah, there was a, a, there was a little bit of screaming and yelling. A little bit of screaming and yelling. And today marks. At the time that we are doing the podcast, the first day of school. Woo! We didn't waste any time coming here and sitting down. <laughs> yeah, it's really quiet in my house right now. And our kids are off to school and they're hopefully learning a lot. Hopefully learning. They just started. They just started learning. Who cares? But we are ready to go. So we are going to talk today about a lot of different things, but I think primarily we're going to talk about trust. And I think that's appropriate when we're talking about our kids in school, because in today's day and age, yes, yes, trust is, a, is definitely an issue with, with school. Um, and we're going to talk about other areas of trust and some interesting aspects of it, but specifically, obviously... Trust in the Lord. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Having that trust in the Lord is probably key, key, isn't it? Yes. So let's just talk, I think, as um, moms, and I think we can probably speak a little bit for dads, but, but grandparents, you know, when, when we have our kids in what was considered a safe place, school, and it's no longer safe, you, you know. Well, I still consider it safe. safe yeah, but I see where you're going with that. Yeah, we, there's been so many things happening in this right. world, and this right. world, as we see it, it really isn't a safe place. The world isn't a safe place, exactly. And, and unfortunately, some of that evil is come down on the schools. Right. I, st- I personally still consider school a safe place. I I'm not going there. <laughs> no, I agree. And I think that it's getting, it gets safer with each incident, frankly, because I think uh, schools are more aware, administrators are more aware, teachers are more aware, and they're willing to do things that um, will keep our kids safe. But, you know, when I think about the Sandy Hook shooting, that rocked my world. That really wa- rocked my world. That, mine too. Yeah, that was not a good day. And I remember that day just going on my knees in tears, begging for Jesus to come back. I just, it was just one of those things that I thought, we can't do this anymore as, as in this world. I mean, we're getting to this place where it's just, you're, it's dangerous to be in this world. So that's where the whole trust thing comes in, because God says that he wants no one to perish, and he won't return until everyone in the nations have heard who he is. And, and so we have a job to do here on earth. We're not here for our security. We're not here for our sa- You know, I heard someone speak the other day, and one of the things they said was, being a Christian, whoever told you that being a Christian was safe? And I thought that was very profound Mm -hmm. because it's not supposed to be safe. We're told by Jesus himself that in this world, you will have many trials and tribulations, but take heart. I have overcome the world. But we can, if we have trust in the Lord, we don't have to worry about that. That's how I see it. Right. Because we aren't safe, but I don't, I don't dwell on that. I go straight to the Lord. And and here's the thing, and I think this is where some Christians may get it a little skewed, because they think, because I trust in the Lord, nothing will happen to me. And that is false. That's false. That is yes. false. It's Be- when things happen to right. us, we run to the Lord. He will. He is our, our ultimate protector. Exactly. He is our rock. And that 
whatever happens is okay because God is always good. Right, right. And that could it. even be death from this life. I yes. mean, it, that doesn't mean you're not going to have death, even death, exactly. but, but death. In the world, not, not right, exactly in Jesus, you know, not et- eternal. You know, I, my mom recently had open heart surgery, and it was, and my mom, for those of you who don't know my mom, which I assume is a lot of you, my mom is a remarkably healthy woman. She eats very well, she's a small woman. I mean, she's always been this on fire for the Lord, you know, healthy, strong woman. And she found out that she had a leaky valve in her heart, which just shocked all of us. And they said that she had to have open heart surgery. And so that was a really scary time. But before she had her surgery, I spent, when I, when I first found out that she had was having open heart surgery. And let me just say, my mom is one of my best friends. I adore her. I talk to her probably, what, five, ten times a day. I mean, it's, you know, I love my mom. She's my spiritual mother along with my <laughs> physical mother. She's just, she is someone I, I respect tremendously, but somebody I go to tremendously. And so to consider losing my mom is a horrific thought for me. And so the day that I found out that she was having open heart surgery, it was in the morning. And I remember just going and getting on my knees and I spent the entire day just worshiping, just worshiping God and praying for my mom and praying for the situation. But by the time I walked out of that experience with the Lord, I walked out knowing that whatever happened, it would be good because God is good. Not necessarily something I want, not necessarily something, but I came to this point where I was okay with whatever happened. That is a remarkable place to be. It I, is. I can't say that yet about my mom. But, but <laughs> not, not there yet. No. But, and you know but what? We're not there yet. So. I'm not there today. Do you know oh, what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? It's I like see. God yes. gives you the grace that you need. Mm-hmm. His mercies are new every morning. And so that day, He'll give you the grace that you need that yeah. day. So during that time, Now, am I there? I'm there overall in that, you know, whatever God does is I'm on an overall basis. But, you know, if I had news again about that, I would have to go back to the Lord and say, okay, God. Um, But I during that whole time that she was in the hospital and her recovery was really tough. We almost lost her in the hospital. And it was just I or it was just a really tough time. And And so she was there for quite a while. But during that entire time, I was at peace. And I was at peace with with whatever happened. It wasn't I was peace that she'd be okay. I really didn't know. But I was at peace with whatever happened. God would take care of it. God would take care of it. And there was one time, and I will I will confess this, I told this to my mom, and it was the weirdest moment. But there was actually one time when she was doing really bad, and I thought, oh my goodness, what if we lost her? And I and I thought there was a moment when I was actually jealous of my mom because I thought she'll be dancing with Jesus. She'll be now, thank goodness she's not. I have to say, <laughs> I'm most pleased that she's not dancing with Jesus in heaven. She might be doing that right now here. I don't know. But I, I think we as believers need to come to that place overall, and it's going to be new every day, but where we have to be so secure in the Lord that whatever happens in our life, he's got it. And I think that's a hard place to get yeah. to. So especially when it comes to our kids. 
Yes. So, and I think we're reminded, you know, I think about, I think about uh, Samuel and Hannah, oh. and I think about how she dedicated yeah. Samuel's life to the Lord, and you know, she got to nurse him for five years. That always breaks mm. my heart when I read that. I know it's a great story, I but I just can't imagine giving my baby up like that. I know but she did. She was she so did. dedicated, and she knew she knew God's way was the right way. It was exactly, and she knew He was God's. Yes. But I think that's what it, it's so important that we we just put our trust in him. So some scriptures that come to mind because it's easy to say. I'll, I'll never forget. I was talking to two women and we were talking about the scripture in Philippians 4, mm-hmm. 6 that says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request to the Lord and peace of God that is in Christ Jesus oh, with thanksgiving. Present your request to the Lord with thanksgiving. That's yeah. the hurt that everyone yeah, forgets. Thanks, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. So you'll have peace in Christ Jesus. Right. Okay. Well, so we were talking about that scripture, do not be anxious for anything. And one of the women said, well, that's impossible to not ever have, never worry about anything. And I thought, well, if the Lord tells us to not worry about anything, it must be possible, but it's not possible in our own power. Mm. It's, it's taking that worry and doing what it says, turning everything to the Lord in prayer and petition. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Yes. Present our request to the Lord. And, and that's what taking that worry and giving it to God. Right. Turning it to him, spending time in prayer, petition. That's like crying out to him. Yes, that's, that's yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's that's so important that we it's not about sitting in our worry and just stirring up because I think we, we as women have this tremendous ability to create things in our mind. I don't, and, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and create the worst scenario <laughs> possible. So I think that when, when instead of doing that, instead of sitting there just stewing and stewing and stewing, we need to turn over to the Lord and say, okay, God, you've got to take this one, which is the only reason I made it through the whole thing with my mom right. is because immediately I said, it's got to be yours because right. this is too big for me. One of the scriptures, if you've listened to this podcast, I'm sure you've heard this, me quote this scripture because it is my favorite. Um, this Romans 8, 28, this is the one that got me. It just gets me through just about everything. Um, and we know that all things work together for the good for those who love God and to those who are all called according to his purpose. Um, I just think with any situation, I used to be a real worrier. Mm. I, probably, I used to have a lot, a lot of fear. And I think God's really done a, a great work in me with that because I find myself not worrying quite as much. Um, but everything, I just, I think, you know, even the worst case scenario, it's like God will take that and he will use it for good somehow. Right. I don't know how it is. I don't know what it looks like. And I don't know what God's plan is, but I just need to trust him. Right. That he knows what he's doing and that he has my best interest in mind. Exactly. And the things that, you know, I, I, there are so many people I've heard say things like, well, if it happened, it must be God's will. Well, if it happened, it, you know, I don't believe that God wills horrible stuff. Right. And, and there's some that there again. Okay. And I want you to clarify that because um, things get, get just a little bit skewed. It's like you take the word and it just gets a little bit skewed and, and it, it's all wrong. It makes it all wrong. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you're right. It's I don't I be, I believe that it's not God's will that these horrible things are happening right. in this terrible world. But when we turn to him, exactly. when we turn to him, he will work it out for the good. He'll take that bad and use it for his glory. Exactly. And you think about the story of Joseph and he went through, you know, his brothers threw him in the pit. He was sto- he was sold into slavery. He was in the the prisons for years, and God had told him, you're going to be ruling over, um, you know, this nation and your family, whatever, his family, his brother, 
brothers, but in that story, it says what was intended for harm. Joseph sat and told his brothers when he forgave them. It's just a remarkable story, but he said to them, what, what you intended for harm, God turned into good. And that's the, that's the beauty of God. What Satan intends for harm, God uses for good. And so what, you know, I think about everything that Satan has done to try and take me out. You know, everything he's done to try and take you out. You know, the, he, what, he, what he uses, what he tries to take us out with, you think about my alcoholism, you think about my, um, you know, all of the stuff you that have I've, a long list I have a long stuff. list, so I'm hey, not, we so don't have time, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time to go into what <laughs> Satan tried to use to take me out, but every single one of those things God used to turn into my testimony. Right, right, and for his glory. And for his, for glory. his glory. Yeah, and bringing people into the kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. So that is the the beauty of what God does. So it's not that he, you know, when I lost, when I went through my series of miscarriages, um, which was horrible. I had I had four almost back to back, and I would have people say to me, you know, well, God's will. It was God's will, or oh. that's a bunch of Am malarkey. I- Yeah, that was not, and what I had to come to terms with was that I may never fully grasp why God allowed that in my life. He doesn't cause bad things to happen, but he absolutely allows things to happen when it will ultimately glorify and honor him. And and we may not on this side fully understand what it is that God is going to do with that. And and frankly, what I've come to learn is that he uses those things to touch other people that we may not even know about. That's true. And so what he is doing in our lives, we have to allow him to just do it and be glorified because we have no idea who we're helping, who we're mm-hmm. benefiting. And And if you think about all of the people who have touched your life, in ways that you don't even, or that they don't even know. You've never told them, you've never met them or whatever it may be, but God is using them to do a work in you. You're doing the same thing for other people. And I think that's so powerful. So yeah, we don't always know why he allows those things, but I think we can be very, um, very, comfortable in the fact, that's not the right word, but secure in the fact that he is not going to allow anything to happen in our lives that will not ultimately glorify him. Right, which kind of leads us right into one of our other scriptures, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, Mm -hmm. and he will make your paths straight. I guess that's five and six. Oh. Something like that. What's seven say? Well, seven says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Well, and I think that's... Yeah, okay. I think that's an important piece of it, too, that we haven't even broached. Is that the right word? Encroached, yes. broached. Um, that we haven't even talked about. Is that <laughs> I know that word. word. Um, that that it's not just it's not just us living life the way we want to live it. Mm. In order to have that peace, in order to have that that peace that passes all understanding, we have to surrender. We have to surrender our lives. We have to trust that he is going to take it, but that does not happen without surrender. And, and I like what you said, not doing things for us, but right. doing things for him. And, and that's, a, that's a lifestyle. Don't it you is. think? Oh. I mean, it becomes a lifestyle yeah. where you just get up in the morning. Okay, Laura, you're well. What do you right. want me to do today? Right. I'm here. And it's a, it's a lifestyle, I think, that takes a long time to achieve. Um, it's a journey, it definitely. Is. 
But I think there's this breaking point that happens in our lives where it's, it's this understanding that, well, well, Cindy and I have fully grasped the knowledge that we know Jack. <laughs> really. I mean, we don't know. I was getting worried there for a minute. I'm like, why do we know? I don't know anything. <laughs> we don't know anything. That's another way to say it. And I think that's what's so great about the Lord, though, is that he can take two women who were severely messed up. Yeah, total screw-ups. <laughs> yep. And, um, you know, stay-at-home moms who he's now using to do work in his kingdom. And the stay-at-home mom part wasn't the screw-up. Just so No, okay. no, no, no. That was the good part. <laughs> It's just devalued in our society, oh, I think, is that, you know. See, I'm there. I could care less. I don't care what they think. I agree. I don't devalue it. No, I, I yeah. think it's a high we calling. So I, just, I just wanted high to make calling. sure that yes. that was no. Good that point. That wasn't the, the cruddy part. That was, that was the, the downfall. That was the beginning for me. That, that was, was the beginning, the beginning of, the of the great. Positive. Yes, yes. The great the part. That was the beginning of surrender. You know what? You're right. You're right. Because it, for, I don't know about you guys. I'm sure you guys too. It mm-hmm. took a lot for me to Ugh. take a step back for, for our family and right. cut half that income or right. probably not half, but anyway, still a good chunk yeah. of that income out. Yeah. <laughs> it was scary. It was scary. And, and you know, and, and we're not, we're not here to say anything, yeah. but other than that for us, that was absolutely the beginning of our sacrifice to say, okay, God, whatever. Right. And, and even then, I wasn't there. I mean, I wasn't to the point of really whatever, but it was the beginning. Yeah. It was definitely the beginning. So there's something else I want to talk about, though, because that made me think of, you know, there is this common phrase that is found nowhere in the Bible But the phrase that God will not give us anything we can't handle. Right. Okay. There's that one. Is that it? So God, yes, God will not Not, give us more. That's what it is. God will not give us more than we can handle. Right. Right. I think that's it. That is not found anywhere in scriptures. Now there is a scripture, uh, first Corinthians 10, 13, that says no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will almost also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That scripture has been skewed. So what's that, what that is saying is that there will be no temptation on earth that you have to succumb to. So, okay, that's a hold on cuz I'm I'm totally thinking about something different right now. Okay. I'm thinking about cookies. When you say that, I know that's kind okay. of dumb, but that's the No. Way. So what is that? What is that reference? 1 Corinthians 10:13. So, continue. So let's let's dissect that a little bit because I I do think yeah. this is a good verse. Well, I love this verse. I've used it quite a bit. But, okay, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. So that right there, so there is no temptation that isn't common for everybody. You know what I mean? So not it, so I'm not going to have anything that only special, you that only I'm yes, dealing with. You are not unique in that. I'm not unique and in that. And that, you know, it's so cookies. funny because when I spoke to – you know, I've, I've dealt with alcoholics recovering and practicing for years as a recovering alcoholic and as somebody in the ministry. And there are so many, I remember one woman in particular, but there are so many people who in the, the midst of their alcoholism think they are the only ones in the world who have this problem and have it as bad as they do. And don't you think that's kind of Satan, though? I mean, Absolutely. isn't that Satan speaking these into yeah. life, into their into their heads, speaking yeah. lies into their heads? Because don't we all think that even if you know, my goodness, you're at home, you're you've got the I, okay. I don't know if you dealt with this, but um, you know, being at home, staying at home with your kids can be 
it's a blessing, but holy oh, goodness. It's hard. And also, it's hard. it's hard. It's hard. And so you think, oh, I'm the only one going yes. through this. But then you get around other people and you realize right. you're not. Okay, so. Yeah. I think that we, we have this weird thing where we feel ultra unique right. in anything that we're dealing with. And the okay. reality is there is really. And, and yes. Okay. So I'm going to go on from there as well because. The Bible also says we have a high priest who understands our temptations. We have a high priest who who can sympathize, who can empathize with our weaknesses because he has experienced them. So Jesus Christ, being God in flesh, he's experienced all of these things as well. So we are not alone in our temptations, even with God being who he is. So, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So think about that. So what it's saying is that there is no temptation so great that you will not have an escape for. So every temptation that comes your way, God has provided a way out. Now we can choose to take that way out or not, but there is always, because of God and what he has provided, an escape. Okay. That, this is, I'm sure you've read this to me before or, you know, or, or said it. You've actually just sat now, through one of my I'm messages. Just, I'm just the, now. But that's okay. Yes. yes. But I'm just no, now sometimes it just hits. To, yes. I get it. <laughs> to my own personal issues. I'm with you. Sometimes it hits like a ton oh. of bricks. Yeah. Okay. So, but we have often taken that very scripture and said, God will give you, God will not give you more than you can handle. Well, how many of us can handle the loss of a child? Right. Uh, yeah. Right. No. But there are a lot of people who've dealt with that. But I would guarantee you that not one of those parents would have ever said, I can handle that. Not one. And yet, it's not that guy. Well, you can handle this, so I'm going to allow you to lose your child. You, on the other hand, not so much, so I'm going to give you a cush life. That's not what God does. But what he does in that scripture in Lamentations, his mercies are new every morning. So he provides us. Because today, you and I could not deal with a certain hardship that maybe someday the Lord will put on us, or the Lord will allow. See, I just said it. Okay. Someday the Lord will allow in our life that today we couldn't handle, but that on that day that he gives it, he will give us the grace to be able to handle that on that day. That's fascinating. I've never yep. thought about it that way. Yep. And then the next day, maybe that grace is gone. But you know, that's, it's, it's, that's how God, I mean, what a merciful God. That's a merciful God. So it's not that God won't give us anything because I think the, what that does is dangerous. Because I think people put this, you know, they, they walk through life then thinking, well, God's not going to give me anything I can't handle. God's not going to give me anything I can't handle. Well, that is... And then when something does right. come up that's really horrific. horrific, what is their view of God or how does that... Right. I mean, I think it would definitely rock your world. And instead of giving you the giving you the desire to turn to him and say, okay, God, I need your grace today. It almost does the opposite. So there is no scripture that says God will not give us more than we can handle. But the beauty of God is that when we are dealing with something we can't handle, we can give it to him and he can handle it. Can I, so can I, um, Mm -mm. yeah, this is, it's another commonly used (laughs) phrase. I see it all the time. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Oh yeah. 
go through that one. Come on, educate yeah, us. Yeah, well. <laughs> you might have to think about it or. Yeah, you know, it, that is a, I think there are definitely, I, I mean, I don't believe that, no, because there, go ahead. Well, I don't, you know, I, I, I've thought about it and I think in the grand scheme of things, the way that we're evolved in every, I don't, I don't necessarily know. I think that things just happen. Did you just say the way we're evolved? Well, the way that we (laughs) are created, the way that our world (laughs) run, the way that our, yes, I meant in our, in our own, right. You know, the way that, that our world runs or, or works, I don't think that things just poof happen out of nowhere. Right. So I, in a, in a way, in a sense, I do think that, everything, certain things happen for a reason or everything, Absolutely. everything happens for a particular reason, but not back, in the way that Go this back is. to your eight Romans eight twenty eight. Read that again. Yes. All things work together for the good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Right. Okay. So, so let's camp there for a second because okay. yes, I believe that there are definitely things that happen for a reason. I think that God does things. He sets up circumstances. He sets up appointments. And, and not only that, but the, because we live in a spiritual realm. So Absolutely. That's what, you know, so you've yeah. got, there's a whole realm. And, right. Yeah. And so, I mean, things are happening. Right. All around us. So keep going. I see what you're saying. Yes. So, okay. But here's that, that phrase is used to justify sin. Exactly. Yes. So, I have talked to women who, I I remember one woman in particular who told me that, now she had a a sexual relationship outside of marriage. She had a child. Her child is wonderful. You know, she wound up getting married later on, raised this beautiful daughter. And she said that that was God's plan. And as hard as it was for me to say this to her, <laughs> I gently, in my loving, gentle way, mm-hmm. which it doesn't always come out, but I really did. I was, I was as gentle as I could be. And I said, you know, your daughter is absolutely beautiful. And, and thank God today, you are raising her as a beautiful woman of God and yada, yada, yada. But God doesn't plan sin. It was not God's plan for you to have a child out of wedlock. That was not God's plan. It was not God's plan for you to have sex outside of marriage. That was not God's plan. But that is where Romans 8.28 can work out because then people turn their lives around and repent or whatever. And so God works together good for those who are the called according right. to his purpose. Right. Right. For those who love God and are the called according and, to his purpose. And they're going back to it did happen for a it did happen for a reason because <laughs> it well it happened. It happened, know, it happened and now there is a cause she did, you know, these right. things, this and this and this. Well, happened. yeah, okay. So, I mean, so I don't, yeah. I don't so get. there are circumstances, so I, or consequences. So it it happened for a reason. The reason was you had sex outside of marriage and there are consequences to having sex outside of marriage. So that was the reason. But to, I think the way that people say that is God's plan. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the reason is because God wanted to dot, 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 dot. And that's not true. God doesn't, God doesn't have a plan B, but he can take our plan B and turn uh, it into yeah. a plan A. I like you that. know, he can take and and he always has a plan. Our his plan is here. God's plan doesn't change. Now, we can go off the road from his plan, and there are times I have no doubt in my mind that God has a plan for your life. You go off and but his plan remains, so he just uses someone else. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I really don't. I don't understand the sovereignty of God. I don't understand the omniscience of God. I don't understand all of that because I am human with my little peon limitation brain. But I do know that God is sovereign. 
And I know that God has a plan for every single one of us, but Satan has a plan too. There we go. Yes. And that's really important to understand. Satan has a plan for our life, just like God has a plan for our life. And we have got to follow God's plan or, you know, God, Jesus said it, you're either for me or you're against me. There's no middle ground, which is a scary thought. But, and again, I I was praying this morning, God, I just don't understand some of these things. Um, And I, I, I don't understand once saved, always saved, and some of the questions there. I don't understand um, who you, who you're going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. I don't understand how you're going to, you know, how, what, what a, a true Christian, you know, the a real conversion and a false conversion. I don't understand all that stuff. I don't understand the difference between grace and work sometimes or doing what God has called you to do and being obedient and grace. I don't understand all that. And I, I can tell you what I think, but I'm not God. I'm not sovereign, but I know that he is a holy God and that we have to be obedient to him. But on the same token, I know that he is a God of love and mercy and grace and that he wants what's best for us. I don't even know where I'm going with that, but I say that to just say, I don't, do you even get, I mean, we're talking about trust. We don't get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to trust something that I don't know why somebody dies of cancer and why somebody's healed. I don't get that. And I'm not about to begin to say it's because, you know, well, it's certainly not, I mean, I'm not even, there's, I don't get it. We're just not going to go there. We're not going to go there. I don't get it. I don't understand why, you know, this person lost their job and this person kept their job. I don't know. But I, I do know that sometimes there are things that we do to cause things because there are sin, there's sin in this world. And if you are a smoker of, you know, 50 years and, and you get sick with lung cancer, there's probably a cause and effect right. for that. I know that if you are promiscuous and you get an STD, there's cause and effect. And, and so I just say that to say, I'm not God. I don't get it. I don't know, but he does. And even with that cause and effect, he can, he can, when we come and surrender, he takes something so ugly and turns it into something so beautiful and glorious for him. So here's a, here's a good scripture. Uh, this is Isaiah 50, 10, and this is from the Amplified Bible. Who is among you who reverently fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant, yet who walks in darkness and deep trouble and has no shining splendor in his heart. I think that's so interesting because that that just goes to, to show that there is sadness and, 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 you know, trouble in all of our lives. And that's something that we have to be honest about, I think. Um, Let him rely on, trust in, and be confident in the name of the Lord, and let him lean upon and be supported by his God. I just think that's so beautiful. It is. I like that. That we can lean on him and be supported by him. And and that is not to say, and because I think when we're when we're trusting in God and going through some tough times, you know. I go back to the example of my mom. I had a tremendous peace, but that's not to say I didn't cry. That's not to say that I didn't have sadness or a heartache. So I, I think it's, I think we get this impression sometimes that if we're supposed to have peace, 
we're supposed to be happy. Oh, yeah, and, you're yeah. Just be fine. exactly. And there is going to be this deep joy in us that comes from the Lord. But that, and that goes back to James. Let me just turn to James really quick. Because I think there's this false impression that having peace means we're thrilled with the circumstances, and that's not the case. But James 1, 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to you to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. So I think it's more about this this deep understanding that this is not our home. Mm-hmm. I It's that idea of living our life for eternity, not for here. And James, let me see, James 4.14 says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. And that's, okay, and then it says, Instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. So life is a vapor. This is a vapor. It's gone. And it's hard for us to understand because here we are living our life. But when we fully understand that this life, boom, it's gone in a a blink of the eye. It's a vapor. And we are living our life for eternity. Eventually, we're going to be in eternity. Those of us in Christ will be with the Lord and it will be Like this never happened. I mean, I just, I think it's going to be like this, you know, I always liken it to being in the womb, Mm, you know, when we were in the womb and I don't personally remember my experience in the womb. Do you? Some people do. Really? I don't Uh know. Yep. (laughs) So I don't personally remember mine, but I do know that I probably felt pretty good, probably felt pretty warm and comfy and I got food and I was swishing in my water and I, you know, I was feeling great. And yet, and I probably didn't want to leave. Right. You know, and yet here I am. And that was a blip. Right. And I think that's what heaven is going to be like, sort of in the, in the, the idea that it'll be like, this really was a vapor, but we are so caught up in living in the here and now. And we forget this is not our home. And that God is a God of eternity. And so we need to be living for eternity. I heard somebody say, I guess um, Christians in China, they were talking to a group of Christians in China. And they said, you know what you need in America? You need some persecution. No, 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 no. I think we're good. I I think we're good. But I think the advantage that Christians have in persecuted countries is that they understand this is not their home. That and they they just take they take God so much more seriously yes. and and they take the word yeah that there's so much more value yes. in it because they they are persecuted for even having the right Bible and exactly it, so. different different world so I say all that to just say my my phrase lately when I get cut off in traffic or somebody does something or bigger stuff things that just really eat at me vapor it's just vapor. vapor. That's vapor. <laughs> and so I've been living this, just this is a vapor. And I and I think that's a good mindset because we have to understand that this is not our home, which is where trust really comes in. It's just trusting that God has yeah. it. And this is vapor. This is all vapor. And so like James says, so we should be saying, okay, God, whatever your will is, whatever you will. Because this is not our home. That's the bottom line. And if we can get to a point where we can honestly say, okay, God, whatever you want, then I think we live with that peace and joy that we can't even comprehend. So, yes? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. 
Good? I agree. Completely. Yeah. So, yay. That was a good podcast on the first day of school for our kids away in this quiet home that we have right now. Woo-hoo. And, and we're sad. Just if you can't hear it in our voices, we're heartbroken. We are. That our kids are in school right now. Because we had to wake up really early. Anyway, <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So with that, we say go and make disciples. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.